Well, good afternoon. We're here at uh, Jordan Bruce's Bruce Music in Edmond, Washington. Edmond, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. We have the uh, second store. The one in Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, this is Jerry Wooten, and his company is Defra Blues Guitars. My name is Michael Ringel, and a couple years back when Jerry and I met, he uh, brought in a cigar box guitar to the uh, wood shop where I was working. Fell in love with it. He became my mentor, and since then we have uh, made several together. Uh, went back to the old roots music instruments such as the canjo, which was originally uh, done with uh, cans and uh, pieces of tree limbs and a string, and then it progressed to where uh, people would make uh, take a broomstick, attach a can to it for the resonation, and uh, then they would play it that way. Uh, then I got into where they were making actual necks. And that's what we do. We uh, take basically, uh, use uh, oak or uh, cherry, uh, poplar, um, and then a, a can of various sizes. Uh, sometimes the larger cans will give you a different tone than the smaller ones. And the neat thing about canjos is it's a very easy instrument for anyone to learn to play, especially a child. Uh, they're on a diatonic scale. There's no sharps or flats. So if your youngster can count from 1 to 11, they can basically play just about any song. Um, Why don't you show them a song just for fun? There's a book on uh, oh. cigar box guitar, or uh, Amazon. Hundred popular panjo uh, songs that are all marked out. Um, we'll give an attempt here to one. Something like that. That's yeah. I mean, in all fairness, this is how a lot of the blues greats got started. Not playing necessarily "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," but you know, playing on a canjo or a one-string cigar box guitar that's called a diddly bow. And you don't have to go very far to make a connection between a diddly bow and the stage Bo name of a great blues player, Bo Diddley. He just flipped it, and that's how he got his stage name. That's okay. Well, the fun thing is, I mean, you can sit on your back porch or something like that in the fall or nice weather and just kind of pick things out. And it's a simple, simple instrument. You can, you know, just kind of play with a little bit. That is not that that note's not quite right. You figure out where it goes. Like like Mike said, there aren't sharps and flats, so it makes it really, really easy to play. And you can play old hymns like Fat Wing Lovitz. I'm sure you recognize it, but. Um, they're just, they're fun. I mean, you know, you're not going to get up in front of a huge audience, but if a grape around a campfire or something like that, or your backyard fire pit, just sitting around with friends. And the other thing is about them, too. Um, if you have a child that wants to learn to play, they have a, say they have a 
cradling to learn to play the guitar. The banjo, they can start out on, and you'll find out whether they want to put the time and the effort into the practice and actually learning to play, or if it's just a momentary type thing that they want to do. But if they do decide that they really want to go after it, then you can always upgrade to a three string or a four string or a full normal guitar. And, and you really don't have to undersell right. what you can do with the banjo. I mean, there's a guy, um, Justin Johnson, you can Google him, but he's an amazing player. He played a version of Jimi Hendrix's Star Spangled Banner on a one string instrument. And it's phenomenal. It's all amped up and all that, of course, but um, you can really play some very cool stuff. And if you introduce, instead of you know using the frets, you can introduce a slide then you can get anything. I mean, you can get the sharps and flats, and you can also learn how to use a slide, which is not trivial. A lot of people who play guitar won't touch a slide because it's a little bit tougher. But, I mean... So it's a little different sound than just doing the frets. And it's really more in line with that roots beginning because they didn't have frets. Or if they did, they were just using, like, nails or something. So, I mean, you know, they're pretty simple. But... Bruce's Music Store, we sell the banjos at $50. So it's not like you're looking at a four or $500 investment to start with. Um, you can always go up, but it's hard sometimes to try and go back down. Bruce. Um, I guess the next thing maybe to talk about is some of the other ones. Um, there's a variety that are here. There are some relatively simple ones. I'm going to grab this Romeo and Juliet just because I did have to move. I mean, this is like one, more than, one of the more simple ones, I think, right? It's probably still got, a lot of them will have the ability to plug into an amp. Um, this one does. I, a lot of times they'll have like a piezo disc inside for their pickup. Not always, but that's, that's a real common way. But this one's pretty simple. I mean, there's not, it's got the piezo pickup, it's got a volume knob, um, it's a three string. Three strings and four strings are probably the most common number for the true cigar box guitars. And when we say cigar box guitars, that encompasses more than just, this is actually a cigar box, so it fits that, that billing. But a lot of times, like Mike made this one. This is a yeah. four string that, uh, it's not truly a cigar box guitar, but it's classified as such. Um, the thermostat with the Rev 66 on it, the thermostat actually works. And the way I know that is when we did a uh, festival in St. Louis uh, two years ago, uh, when we started, the, the thermostat was reading 60 degrees, and eight hours later when we ended up, it was pushing 100. So I always tell people if you're really a hot guitar player, you can make the mercury rise on this one. That's true. That's true. But they can go from that to then something, this is a little, this is actually a cigar box. It's a Cohiba cigar box. This has two humbucker pickups, volume and tone knobs for each of the pickups, and a switch for whether it's the neck or the bridge pickup, or both, which is the same arrangement as like a Les Paul guitar, if you're familiar with those. Now this is not a Les Paul guitar, but it's a Les Paul style cigar box guitar, three strings. I've got it playing through a little amp here, but um, what the, and this has got both hum, both humbuckers playing, so you get a little different tone, just like you do on a regular Les Paul guitar. But Another one that's um, kind of fun is not truly a cigar box guitar, but it's this. Um, it's made out of a uh, Route 66 sign. So, you know, in this area, that's a pretty pretty big deal to be 
effectively into group 66. And this one also has, again, the internal pickup, but it's got a onboard equalizer preamp kind of thing. Um, so it has a little different sound than the um, Cohiba, but part of it's because it's kind of a resonator style with a metal um, face, and it's got a big rod pickup inside it as well instead of the humbuckers. But it, and it does have a different sound, so you, you know, it's just more conducive to different types of songs maybe. Maybe I'll try this with the slide just to see if I can do that. What you're looking at is, is actual instruments that are built here in Oklahoma by Oklahoma craftsmen. Um, most of the uh, wood we get locally. Uh, some of the parts we get from C.B. Giddy, which is out of New Hampshire. Um, there are other places you, you can get parts on uh, Amazon. Um, you can also get parts depending on what you're looking for. You can get some parts locally, but we found that uh, if we're buying in larger quantities, um, it will help get the price down a little. Um, and again, uh, there are so many different styles uh, in the shop here at uh, Jordan's Bruce Music. I think we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, about six or seven different guitars, three string, four string, and then three various canjos of different styles. So it's uh, something that if you really want to get into unusual, what some people call unusual instruments or the basic roots instruments where all of our guitars progress from, um, this is a place to come and see them. You can pick them up and play them. Um, if you do drop them and break them, of course, you'll have to pay for them. But just like the piano, if you not, pick them up and same, if same not, we there. will. You know, uh, we at least get a feel for them and see what you think. We've found that a lot of guitar players are a little bit uh, intimidated by a three string or a four string. And one of the things I always tell them is if you can play a six string, when you play a three string, you can only make half the mistakes. It's fun to hand them to a guitar player in all fairness. It's a lot of fun because they just start playing it. It's, it's pretty insane. Anyway. Probably wraps it up. Come by and see Jordan here at Bruce Music. Mm -hmm. Look around. He's got a bunch of other instruments as well, of course. Um, but he's you know, kind of featuring these Oklahoma built roots instruments. This is Roots 66, by the way. So, um, anyway, come in, have a look around, try them out, meet Bruce. Thank you. Thank you.